Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Pregame from the Pun, Madison Mallard Pregame Show. Derek Brizendine alongside Alec Dopp. And Alec, long first inning last night, but not too long of a game. Good win for the Mallards. Yeah, long first inning, but a good one for the Mallards, like you just mentioned, Derek. Uh, the first 10 guys of the game for the Mallards reached, reached base in some form or another, which is unheard of, I mean, uh, you know, unseen. I've For me, I don't know about you, but uh, it was quite the, quite the showing uh, for the Mallards, who actually didn't, you know, Donnie mentioned, Donnie Scott didn't mention, he mentioned that they didn't really hit the ball tremendous yesterday, but, you know, they found a way to draw the walks and to get on base, and uh, it, it went a long ways last night. And one guy absolutely crushing the ball last night. The whole team was hitting well there in the first inning. One guy that was just crushing it all night long, Gene Ramirez. Oh, what can you say about uh, Gene Ramirez? I mean, he's been... He's been, uh, you know, just one of the, the best players for the Mallards this season. He's slugging 516 at home this season, and that's compared to a much less impressive, but still, still very good, about 418. So, um, you know, he's played his best ball. I think six of his seven home runs have been at home this year. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, you know a big reason why he was in the showcase Tuesday that we saw here at the Duck Pond. He can uh, he can really hit the ball. Another guy hitting the ball well, and just glad he's back. Chris Tashita been back week and a half now and man everybody just to feel around the ballpark everybody's just so glad to have him back great guy great ball player yeah and I think he's you know really happy to be back too I mean you can just see the way he carries himself kind of on the field uh, at first base over the, over the last couple nights for the Mallards uh, and that's a position that the Mallards have struggled to get you know really good production out of this year um, and you know to have him back and you know raking he's actually he's actually hitting 500 with runners in scoring position and two outs uh, this season, he's eight for six, eight for sixteen in those positions. Uh, we saw a couple of those hits last night, and uh, you know he's one of the most clutch players uh, on this team, and that's going to be key moving forward for sure. And you mentioned the difficulty to fill that first base position. Actually, had a guy in Bri Brian Rodemoyer who played a pretty good first base there to start out the year, and then he left. Scott Tyler picked it up, and Scott Tyler was having a great season, and then Scott Tyler got hurt. I'm like, what are you what? What are we going to do? What do we what do we have to do to get a guy at first? And then Chris Tashita comes back, and it's like the guy didn't even miss a beat. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, it's, you can see the enthusiasm. He's, he's uh, you know, he's glad to be here uh, to get a second chance with the Mallards. And, uh, you know, he's we knew he was a defensive whiz kind of coming into the season, a really good utility glove for Western Illinois um, throughout his two years there. And, uh, you know, uh, it's really gone a long ways for the Mallards this season, having him to be able to, you know, versatility-wise, to be able to stick him there at first base, and he's played really well so far. And I know we've talked about it a couple times here, but once again last night, the pitching, just outstanding. A.J. Bogucki, Jesse Kay, Troy Kankle, Josh Pierce, Justin Watts, five very strong pitchers, and even though, yeah, we used five pitchers, they only pitched an inning or two, so it's not like they did did too much. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. I mean, that's been the strength for this club all season. I would say um, is you know dipping into the bullpen and you know not work, not overworking them, but uh, you know getting the you know the innings you'd want from guys who can you know come in and get those key you know outs against if a left. Donnie's got to bring in a lefty against another left-handed batter or something like that. But uh, you know AJ was great last night. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's really been a great season for him, uh, you know, production-wise, and uh, you know, seeing guys like Josh Pierce again contribute with some more strikeouts, and uh, Justin Watts. I mean, he walked a couple guys, and or not, he didn't walk anyone, but he gave a couple outs, gave up a couple runs uh, last night, but he did strike out a couple more guys. So he's going to be key, uh, you know, in the late goings for the Mallards uh, moving forward for sure. It's going to be interesting to see how how long these arms can make it because once you get in once you get into the playoffs I mean that's the whole for everything in one week you're not able to rest the guys and say well I'll rest them and then maybe I'll throw them tomorrow well there could be no no tomorrow I mean you you really got to throw out your best and everybody's got to be on top of their game as we head into next week yeah and that's really where the managers kind of make their money so to speak is you know uh they know their guys and they know what they're capable of doing and that's one way you know Donnie's really good with I would say um, is you know structuring the bullpen and structuring the rotation you know knowing guys uh, how what their you know comfortability levels are that's really important late in the season um, and you know we're gonna see probably a, sh a shortened uh, outing tonight from Andrew Beckwith uh, for the Mallards just like AJ Bogucki last night only three innings 
Um, but, you know, that's all for a good reason, as the Mallards have, you know, uh, at least guaranteed one playoff game, so that's going to be big. And Beckwith pitching in the final home game here from the Duck Pond here this season. And it's really been a special season. Just this is my first time with Northwoods League action. Been kind of fun to watch and see the guys, really a lot of them, just continue to strive and get better. Yeah, and like AJ, I mean, he was, I mean, he's a returner from last season and he didn't have a tremendous year. And this is all about developing, you know, developmental league, the best in the country <laughs> and the biggest. Uh, so, I mean, those are two things that, you know, the Mallards really pride themselves off of. And, you know, they certainly have a good coaching staff behind them to help them do that. Well, this could be our last pregame show of the year, but we still don't know that because playoff spots still aren't set. The teams are set, but right now, it, it's still anybody's ball game. Even lacrosse, they've still got a shot. Their, their shot's slowly, slowly weaning off here. But us in Green Bay, going to be a huge weekend. Yeah, the top three teams in the South Division really seem to be you know, playing their best ball late in the season. And it's going to be you know, extremely interesting to you know, watch how these last few games of the regular season kind of play out. I mean, uh, Kenosha's 7-3 and three in their last 10, I believe, or 8-2. and two. We're 8-2 and two in our last 10. Uh, Green Bay's 7-3 and three in their last 10. Uh, and you mentioned lacrosse. I mean, they're a great ball club, even though they're kind of struggling lately. But, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, at this point, the way teams are playing heading into the postseason, it seems like anyone can kind of, you know, claim that top spot and play for the for the championship against the North Division for sure. Well, like we've said before, all we know now is that there is, there is going to be one more Mallards game. Just don't know where. So be following us on social media. That's where we'll let you guys know where we finish up and, be following along this weekend because it's going to be a fun one up in lacrosse. Absolutely, yeah. These are three huge games, especially tomorrow's doubleheader. Uh, you know, doubleheaders can be funky, especially for, you know, managers and whatnot. I mean, how they're going to throw out their lineup together if guys are tired or whatnot. So it's, uh, you know, a cross-state kind of travel for the Mallards, and uh, it'll be key for them to, you know, maintain their focus here on this six-game winning streak. Be interesting how this weekend finishes out, where the Mallards finish. Thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you back here next week. Enjoy the game. Go Mallards.